you've experienced and survived uh, a Nazi death camp. And all of us in our imaginations might have played a game of picturing how we would behave in such a situation, wondering whether we would be, you know, sly little capos who tried to please the Germans in order to live a few weeks longer, or whether we would be dehumanized into just kind of almost zombie-like creatures with no life left. But you had a middle course, which was due to a gift that you were given from your birth. Is that a fair way of putting yeah. it? Yeah. I was very extremely lucky. I mean, it was all a matter of luck, you know. People ask, ask, how could you possibly survive that? And I'm one of the very few people who survived a year in Auschwitz. Nobody survives a year in Auschwitz because of music. Yeah. However suspect that music was, you know, the reaction to this music was very varied. You know, I've read in books, uh, you know, that it was uh, terribly offensive to hear music in Auschwitz. And other people who said it was wonderful to shut your eyes for a few minutes and to, yes. to think yourself out of this disaster area, you see, into something. Because I asked you um, an, a, a question which seemed to me obvious, and your reply was just as obvious in a way, and that was whether music could be ruined by association, by, by its association with evil. Yes, some people think that. I mean, I'm often asked, how can you still play the cello afterwards? You can actually um, elevate yourself into a sphere where this dirt is not going to touch you. That is, yeah. that is really the thing. Did the act of playing the music, which was your work, presumably, while others were making or painting or banging hammers in things, were you, were you kept away from that so that you could practice and... and yeah, I mean, we were very, very, very uh, fortunate, really. Yeah. Apart from the fact, I mean, number one fortunate was that these two women who run the camp, I mean, I've talked about the Germans now, one of them wo didn't like the orchestra, but the other one did, so that was lucky. Yeah that we had this job, which uh, really, uh, you know, helped us to survive. We wouldn't, nobody would have survived if we, you right. know, I, I was there for a, for a considerably long time. And also, we were such a bad orchestra. <laughs> I mean, we were just sort of amateur kids, you know, some of them, could, we were about five people who could play properly, that the job of Alma was to make an uh, something possible out of us, which meant that we, Alma was very strict. We were scared of Alma, you know, and <laughs> got temporarily to look out of the window where the chimney is. This is go. Gustav Mahler's niece. Yeah, yes. I mean, she was a tremendous lady, really. Mm. I mean, she gets maligned a lot now that she mm. was so strict. And yes, yeah, she was strict. Yeah. And she punished us for playing wrong notes, and we didn't like her particularly. But all of us, I mean, there are very, very few of us alive still came to the conclusion that she saved our lives, if she hadn't been like that. Yeah. And also, you know, we were so scared and so preoccupied with not playing, you know, play okay, fine, that we get, that you could for seconds forget where you were, actually. Yes. Mad, yes. the whole thing is mad. You see, we, they reduced us to something that wasn't actually considered human. Mm. We weren't really humans. Yeah. And it was 10 years of Streicher and his um, Deutsche Gerber, Oberbach, or whatever it was, and, yeah. and, and, and Goebbels with these films of, of rats and mice and I know, I mean, this vermin. is what was put in the... Uh, Aschen, Aschen, uh, Affenmenschen. Affenmenschen, yes. Yes, and Untermenschen even. And you yeah. know, the Germans, uh, they respect authority. Yeah. If somebody important says this, it must be true. That is the whole trouble. Yeah, I think I, I yeah. did one of those programs. Who do you think you are? And we were in um, Slovakia and going towards the shtetl where my grandfather had lived, and um, the driver, who was supposed to be the one who was helping out with the, um, you know, all the details and the family mm -hmm. trees, and says he looked around and said, "Of course, you know, we Slovakians are people of the earth." The Jews were not interested in farming and the land. And I said, wait a second, wait a second. They were not allowed to own any land. He said, yes, yes well, yes, it's all right. Exactly, and, then, and then half an hour later, he says, you know, I'm just saying, the rich Jews, they got out. They knew what was happening. They could have helped their fellow Jews. I said, whoa, you're now saying <laughs> that the, 
the Holocaust was entirely the fault of the rich Jews who didn't stop to help the, the poorer Jews. And it just shows you how you can... It's so deeply bred. Poison bread. brains, yeah. yes. We have a bit of a problem who are you know, <laughs> Jewish, you know. Unless a mother is Jewish, you're not Jewish. And whatever. Right. You know, we stood on the, in the queue in the gas chamber. All whether the we ate pork or drove on a Saturday, a Jew is a Jew and has to be destroyed. There are some letters in here which seem to me to strike at the very heart of the, the terrible problem of evil. Uh, everybody hears that phrase of Hannah Arendt about the banality of evil. This, this takes the form of a lot of letters home from ordinary soldiers and commandants and doctors and sergeants during the days of the show, of the, of the, of the, of the slaughter, which were called Zonderaktion, special actions. I just opened that book at random and I used one letter of one of the guys there, who, lovely letter to his family, dear Mutti, dear oh, yes. I hope that you are behaving, not putting your elbows on the table when you eat. P.S. What we are doing here, he was one of the Sonderkommander, yeah. gives me a little bit, uh, not all that happy about it, but since Hitler said it, it must be okay. One of the letters here. That's this is an true. unbelievable book. That is a book worth reading because it is just tales from the mouths of people who did... Who did all these terrible such things. Such... And thought it was okay. Thing. A little bit worried. Maybe it's not okay, but... But then, of course, it was so dirty, it all got splattered with blood, and that wasn't really very nice. No. And Goebbels, I think, said that, I know you've done a fantastic job there. I know it was very difficult, but you still remain decent people. I mean, you know, it is very difficult. It's a bit think. like the Pope blessing the torturers at the uh, Inquisition, yeah. isn't it? The last thing one forgets, of course, is that um, the layers of um, um, hierarchies of... of, of was uh, tremendous. It seems to us and to anybody who thinks of their grandchildren, for example, that the idea of them seeing every day death, brutality, cruelty, gunfire, brains flying out of the back of a human... Skull. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> all these things that you've seen and somehow had to cope with without. And they worry about things that make me laugh. <laughs> yes. Anyway, I'm not all that interested. In any case, never have been to tell young people how terrible it was. It's not about telling our miserable stories to people, and it doesn't actually lead anywhere. So you feel sorry for this poor person who's been through such. Can't imagine terrible. Yeah. That is not really what, uh, what Holocaust education is about. What is your attitude now to somebody who isn't like you? Well, I'm sort of advocating that they should go and have a cup of coffee together and find that they have perhaps more in common than separate yes. them. Engagement. Yeah. Utopia was put there for a purpose, something to aim for. Yeah, it's, um, I think that's what it is about. Mm. And respect for other people. It's not important enough to have a day, you know, a Holocaust mm. day, and, and tomorrow we hate the Jews again or something <laughs> like that. You have to, uh, yes, if it goes in the, really in the depth, and a little bit also perhaps with Jewish history, where the Jews, you know, we talk about Jews, like, you know, as I said, like a sort of lump of people, you know, yeah. unless we really understand why we are everywhere, you know. Yes. Why? Why are we not at home? It goes right back to Israel. What do we do with these people like me, displaced person? Where are you going to go? I wasn't, I'm German. Yes, I'm born in Germany. I'm not going back to Germany, live yeah. among the Germans. So where do we go? Very little is actually done to perhaps explain who are we actually, we Jews. It's, it's very, very true. Who are we? And I would it quite... I would find it difficult to quite explain who we are. We are the most unbelievable mixture. Yeah. And the uh, victims of having been chased from one country to the other for thousands of years and until we are chased out again. The yeah. whole idea what they think Jews are is so completely nuts. We're just people, I yeah. can say. People who are on the wrong side of history. Can you imagine any... any Western, not that it makes a difference that it's Western, any Western um, apocalyptic, holocaustic um, genocide of, of, of that happening kind happening again. again. Yeah. I don't think we will ever stop killing each other. Wars, yeah. I think, are sort of built in into human society. But the um, 
the refinement, the, the absolute Im unbelievable um, artistry. Yes, yes. Of killing well, those lines of desks and the, all the chemicals. That's right, and, and people who are completely unable to defend themselves. If you do meet up with someone else who who was there, an, an alumnus or alumna, yeah. as um, as the Americans put it, do you find yourself telling stories and not remembering what they're saying? Saying, I don't. Did that happen? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know whether you saw a film called Rashomon ever. Oh yes, 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 absolutely. I think that yes, is a Rashomon, perfect example. Yes. You see, people. Five people, seven people, can't remember, witness a murder and they yep. all tell a different story because we are very individual in what we see or what we don't want to see. Yeah. And that makes history so suspect. So unreliable, absolutely. Completely unreliable because it's completely, um, you know, it's not ob it's subjective. No. Well, you can always come back to the cello. Really. Which is quite, yeah, okay, I'm mm. fine. Is in one cellist less. Yeah, right. enough, How many enough cellists, <laughs> yes, in the family. <laughs> yes. Orchestra has a, has a language of their own. If we knew there was terrible conductor, just plan B, ignore the guy. Yes, it is. It's Ted Heath, for instance. Oh, of course. Ted yes. Heath, we really had fun with him. And I mean, he was such an idiot, you know, he just <laughs> fell into every. Yeah. <laughs> He really thought he was a conductor. It's amazing. Well, you see, I think he could read an organ score enough to be able to play the notes on it, and he felt he could read an orchestral score, which is more than I can believe any human I being can do. I should think that he could but read an really orchestral read. score. If, the way true conductors are, because I knew Yuri Schulte, and I would, I, I remember going down to his, um, was it Valerie in Hampstead, they, they I had know, a place. I know, the house. He had, you know, he had that lovely basement, and he had all these things, and, and uh, he said, ah, this was that, that, this, really, this you will love, look here. <laughs> You see, this is a mistake that Verdi made, and this correction was made by Toscanini when Toscanini was just 21. Yes, it's a true story. Yeah, very well. <laughs> <laughs> but he, and he had two pianos there, and he would just go, and he was so, so in, in, in love and in life with music. He was just came bursting inside. I know, him, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, I thought he comes in like a prize fighter, you know. Yeah, the, the great touch of that, yeah. <laughs> Someone said to you, um, we'll give you the chance of going to Auschwitz and living exactly as you have no, and surviving, you. or you can come out free and get on the train and grow up in England without having the... Uh, <laughs> I don't regret that I had this experience. I mean, people say, would you like to not have... Mm. I can't imagine myself without it, you know, let's put it it's that part way. part of who you are now, yes. Yeah, that is almost impossible. Now, somehow, we're going to turn our conversation into, I wouldn't say an art piece. I'm not going to break you up into weird mosaics or anything like that, but um, I'll discuss this about how, how, we'll, how we'll do it. And um, I'll write something, is, is the thing, and I'll obviously send it to you for corrections. And if you'd like to write the corrections on it, they, all, they can stay there as much as you like. Again, you made the same mistake, you did this last time. <laughs> <laughs>